I briefly played the MotoGP 2022 preview. Here is what is new to the series and what to expect. The 22nd of April 2022. That is the release date for MotoGP 22, the latest installment of the official MotoGP series. And that is also what you are seeing on screen. Yes, developer Milestone let me have a go, albeit the content was limited to no career mode or multiplayer, while the playtime was brief. Regardless, I can share some key details. Now, a year of development is not much in the video game world, but it was enough time for the officially licensed MotoGP racer to feature improvements to the rider models, which were hardly cutting edge in previous games, and pit lanes. This includes facial animations. It all looks better if you ask me, although it seems strange the fact you can choose your gender identity, but only select from he, him, and she, her. No custom danglies, like in Cyberpunk 2077 here. Also new to the series is the Ride Height device, which is confusingly shortened to RHD in the user interface, and I keep reading it as right-hand drive, but anyway, engage the suspension trickery and you can accelerate harder with less chance of a wheelie. It is a part of real MotoGP racing and basically works by compressing the suspension to lower the center of gravity. Think of it as an evolution of the whole shot. RHD is obviously useful for the start of a race, but also when exiting corners. MotoGP 22 is also said to have enhanced track surfaces. The developer told me that it reworked all the drone scans and track shape to enhance the realism. On that subject, improved tyre realism with tyre deformation is now a thing, and there have been improvements to the suspension when it comes to riding over kerbs. The bikes appear to behave more realistically if you overdo it on the more pronounced apexes. There is even two-player split screen on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC via Steam, but not the Nintendo Switch version. However, you have a new Kirby game where you can become a car, so it all balances out. From what I have seen in the limited MotoGP 22 preview, the bikes feel much like they did in MotoGP 21. Deadly fast in a straight line, braking distances that go on forever, and some hilarious drifty moments with traction control off. Even though the bikes look a little strange in the replays, hello occasional hover bike, the MotoGP games have a fluidity to them that feels gratifying. You can be hyper aggressive with your inputs and, so long as you can be precise, get away with it. Compared to cars, the whole leaning in early for a corner takes getting used to. When you do though, you feel like a pro, especially if you are using the first person views, which makes MotoGP 22 look like real life at the 4K resolution seen here. Inner curbs can be ridden over with no surprises. Venture out to the outer bumpier sections though, and well, it becomes like a dangerous version of Buckaroo. Keep ignoring the bike screams for gentle inputs and you will soon part ways abruptly. Where I struggle is those realistic braking distances, which are hard to judge. The fact third person views reduce the sensation of speed is partly to blame, but honestly compared to downforce heavy cars, it takes practice to learn just how early you need to get the anchors on. Of course, the top end of bike racing means you can be doing absolutely insane speeds in no time at all, and braking at an angle upsets the bike. Turn all assists off, and you also have to contend with the rear wheels lifting up if you brake too hard. Taming MotoGP 22 and its predecessors then takes dedication, but the bikes do seem less inclined to launch you into space if you accelerate too early, even with traction control at its lowest level. Now, MotoGP 22 has some issues. The arrow indicators used to show your braking points, for instance, can feel wrongly placed, which results in a gravel holiday or a barrier party. Switching to the trackside indicators can work better, but honestly, try to learn this stuff using visual landmarks such as the 150 meter signs. It takes time to master, but it forces you to focus on learning the handling as opposed to fixating on blue triangles. As for artificial intelligence, Milestone made it clear in the accompanying preview text that MotoGP 22 has some issues that are being worked on ahead of the release date. 
This explains why the AI sometimes crashes on an autopilot before a tutorial challenge begins. The tutorials could also do with some jazzing up. Going down the Gran Turismo Racing License system, whereby you have multiple times to aim for, gold, silver and bronze for instance, and a reward for doing all of them would make their steep learning curve easier to stomach. The reference times needed for completion can be unforgiving, shall we say. On a more positive note, the famous 2009 season mode is excellent. Two. Three. Four. Five. Five world championships in a row. Here you get a combination of documentary footage and narration, setting the scene while you act out key moments along the way, such as leaving Valentino Rossi for dust in the season opener. Based on first impressions, MotoGP 22 appears to retain its more niche appeal compared with Ride 4. However, it is shaping up nicely and is the only way to enjoy all the official riders, bikes, circuits and everything else. On that note, subscribe and like, thank you for watching, take care.